Hi guys, it's Mrs. Moss here, and we're going to start going over the Earth Science Reference Table, page 11, to learn about how we use PNS wave arrival times and travel times to help us determine the epicenter of an earthquake. So, let's look at the chart before we begin practicing with any problems. When we see these chart, this chart, we need to look at two things. First, we need to look at the x-axis and the y-axis, okay? So let's start with the y-axis at the bottom. You notice it says epicenter distance. Well, the thing that you should also take note of is that scientific notation. This says 10 to the third power. Well, if you remember back to when we learned about scientific notation, that actually means 1,000. So each of these numbers along the bottom, 1 through 10, actually mean 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and so on. So what I want you to do now is just literally write in 000, 000 under each one so that you remember that each of those mean 1,000, okay? Continue doing that through number 10. If those are each 1,000 kilometers apart, that means each of these boxes in between must equal something. So we need to determine what that is. Well, if each is a thousand and there are one, two, three, four, five boxes, 1,000 divided by five gives you 200. So each box on the bottom is worth 200. And you could write that along the bottom of your chart as well. Now let's look at the x-axis. I'm sorry, now let's look at the y-axis. The y-axis is travel time in minutes minutes. So we're going to be going up by 60. And it's pretty clear here that each of these uh, is worth one minute and that when we have three, uh, there are three boxes separating, so 60, which is one minute, divided by three gives us 20 seconds. So each of these boxes is 20 seconds. You should write that on your chart as well. Okay, so now that we have all of the intervals and our chart established on what the distance is and what the time is, let's look at some practice problems that we may encounter when we do this unit. So let's look at the first problem. What is the travel time of the P wave for an earthquake with an epicenter at 5,000 kilometers? Well, to start, we need to find 5,000 kilometers on our chart. And if you notice, at the bottom, at our x-axis, here is 5,000 kilometers. So it asks, how long would the P wave for the earthquake to arrive? What is the travel time? From 5,000, we go up until we hit the black line of the P wave. So that would bring us to here. Then we go across to the uh, y-axis, and we see that it's just over the 8 minutes. So the answer would be 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Now, the next question says, how long would the S wave to take for the same epicenter, from the same epicenter? So let's look at this again. We have the 5,000 mark, and we went up to the P wave. Let's continue up to the S wave. Okay, and now let's go over, and we see that it's just under the 15-minute mark, which means it's 14 minutes and 20, 40 seconds. So the answer is 14 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, catch that. Let's take a moment and practice some on your own. Okay, so here you have some practice questions. The instructions are to write these questions down and answer them in your notebook to discuss in class tomorrow. So take a moment, look it over, go back to your reference table, and follow the steps that we did in the previous slide to answer these three questions. When you're finished, you may move on. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Now we're going to look at a different type of question that you may encounter when we're working with earthquakes. What is the epicenter distance if the difference between the P and S waves is five minutes? Okay, so that's a little more complicated because it's giving us um, a difference between the two waves, but that actually will not be a problem because we're just going to use this time interval to again and look at a different question that we may be asked when we have um, earthquake studies. What is the epicenter distance if the difference between P and S waves is five minutes? All right, well here we're going to start instead of with the epicenter distance, we know the travel time. So we're going to go and see what the travel time is. 
the first time we have to locate the travel time, the first thing we have to do is locate the travel time on the y-axis. And so that would be five minutes. We're going to take a separate piece of paper. Now this step is very important. And we're going to mark off the five minute travel time along the y-axis on your paper. So that means you're going to make two marks, one at the zero and one at the five minute mark. And you're going to make it on a separate piece of paper. Now my chart has um, this PowerPoint presentation only allows me to draw. You don't need to draw a line on your paper. You just need to mark it off in two notches, up and down. So it would really look like this on your paper. You're going to then take that paper and slide it in between the P and the S wave so that the top line touches the S wave and the bottom line touches the P wave. Now the important thing to remember is to use those lines to make sure that you line it up straight. We don't need it tilted in any way or else it will lead you to a different epicenter distance. So use those lines that they give you on the chart to make a straight line going down. Okay. So that's what this is going to look like. We slide that paper up so that it goes in between and we find where the top meets the top, the bottom meets the bottom. And then for the last step, we follow the line down to determine our epicenter distance. So in this case, it leads just below the 4,000 mark at 3,800. So our answer is 3,800 kilometers. Let's try another one. We're going to find the epicenter distance when the travel time is three minutes. So again, we're going to go to the step where we look for the travel time on the side. Again, use your piece of paper, mark down the two notches from zero to three minutes, wherever that may be. Take that piece of paper, slide it up until the top reaches the S wave, the bottom reaches the P wave, and then you look down. And looking down, you will see that you get to right below the 3,000 mark, which is 20, um, I'm sorry, right below the 2,000 mark, which is 1,800. Okay, so now that you have that down, let's practice a few on your own. Again, you write these questions under the ones you wrote in before, and you'll do numbers five, four and five on your piece of paper so that we can discuss it in class. Okay, one. Okay, so that ends looking at our reference table, page 11, and using it in various ways to answer questions. Now, we will be doing more practice with this in class, and uh, for now, we'll see you next time.